What does it take to protect critical habitat for endangered Blanding's turtles from a proposed massive rock quarry? I'm here on the beautiful north shore of Lake Huron, Robinson Huron Treaty Territory, to meet with local community members who have been trying to do just that. I'm Rhonda Kirby, and this is my husband, Tom Kirby, and uh, this is our home on Lake Lozon. We've lived here for approximately 34 years. Um, our story about the proposed quarry uh, began around 2011, 2012. We started noticing uh, trucks um, from southern Ontario um, under the company name Darien Aggregates at the end of the road. And of course we asked questions and <clears throat> they had uh, people here and they were uh, doing uh, test sampling. They said that they had land claims and they were just uh, doing sampling, uh, samplings for a particular rock that they were interested in. And as it turns out, uh, they were very serious about a proposed quarry not far from our home. We were probably 1.4 kilometers as the crow flies from the edge of the proposed quarry site. And again, we really had no idea as to the size or scope of the project until we were given a registered letter from uh, the consulting company and it outlined exactly what the, the proposed quarry was going to look like. It was going to be uh, a very long permit process. 128 years. 128 years and they would be taking 3.14 million tons per year. Yes. Depending on demand. Depending on demand. And when we got looking at the site plans we were pretty alarmed because that is not what we were led to believe. We felt completely duped. We felt that we had been lied to and with respect to that as we started thinking about what we were in store for, it did not give us any confidence that the company would do what they could to minimize environmental damage. So, we were concerned that only a handful of people knew about this. So Tom and I uh, did our own mail out to everybody in the community and made sure that as many people as possible knew about this proposed quarry. And uh, it, it was fairly successful. The, the uh, proponent was a little surprised uh, that a handful of northern Ontarians in a very, what they consider a remote area, would, uh, would push back as hard as we did. I'm uh, Dr. Borum, Doug Borum from the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. This is my, uh, my wife, Dr. Joanna Dolling, um, who's a geneticist. And we got involved in this project because we actually, as a crow flies, are the closest to the quarry that you can live. And we, we got interested in this project because we thought to have a quarry come in here, we would help them out and make sure everything was done the best way it could be done, with the best science. We proposed the company that we would help them do the research so they could do a proper before-after control impact study. And, and, and we were fully, and the MNRF was behind it, and so was the consultants. And then for some reason, it never worked out. But we went ahead and did the research anyways. So we proposed that study, uh, and uh, we started the study, and we, we were lucky to get amazing students. We got amazing researchers and amazing students. Um, one of the best researchers in turtles in the world, Jackie Liskis, uh, agreed to do the study. And so we started the whole study. I think during that time too, though, did, did Jackie Liskus not receive a phone call from uh, yeah. Darian? She, re she received a phone call from Darian encouraging, encouraging her not to do the research, which then encouraged her to do the research. And then some kind of uh, unusual circumstances happened, like a Blanding's turtle walked into her office then I was driving home from the university and a blanding turtle was crossing the road and I carried it across the road, which are two weird things because I've never seen blanding turtle in my life, except for that. Hi, <laughs> so I'm Heather and this is Shannon. Um, we were both field techs for the project in 2018. Um, and this is the honey pot, or so we call it. <laughs> um, this is on Long Lake, so uh, 30 meters away from the proposed quarry. Um, and we call it the honey pot because ev almost every time we come here, you're guaranteed 
to catch yeah. a turtle, which is pretty unheard of for Blanding's turtles. Yeah. First day, first field day, we saw eight turtles here. <laughs> In like half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> it was shocking. Yeah. Unexpected for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, this spot is especially good because it's got tons of bog mats, um, which the turtles use for basking, but also for overwintering. Um, so in the fall and in the spring, when temperatures dip, they mate, um, which and it's a great time because they're all congregated together. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, they'll hibernate here over winter. Um, stay in the debris, in the mud, in the bog mats, and uh, come May, they are up and active. Ready to bask. <laughs> and ready to bask. Get yep. warm. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the spot to go uh, to find turtles, and um, whenever we were looking for them, this was our go-to spot. Right. And this is critical habitat. Yeah, so Blanding's <laughs> turtles do have um, different types of habitat. This is overwintering habitat. Um, so it is the basically the most critical. Um, unfortunately, blank turtle nesting habitat is not wet. So all of the protections that wetlands get, provincially significant wetlands, are not automatically covering the nesting habitat. We have to um, ground confirm a nest for it to be protected blank turtle habitat. Mm. Unfortunately, because the site is so big, we weren't able to ground confirm many uh, nesting habitats. Just a, few, just a few short weeks into the Laurentian University study, uh, we knew that it was probably a very, well, a very unique population and uh, by the end of that season um, there were, they had located uh, dozens and dozens and I think uh, by the end of the summer probably upwards of 50 turtles. 57. 57. And uh, of course um, the d proponent, Darian, was quite upset about that because it was going to change the whole nature of their project. It was going to slow the process down. Um, anyway, so as a result of that, they uh, decided to resort to some bullying tactics and started uh, uh, the uh, opponent uh, suggesting that there was academic misconduct um, that I don't know whether they thought uh, the biologists were planting turtles or they were falsifying data, but that was basically the suggestion. It was also suggesting that uh, Tom and I were interfering with the research. There was a retraction by the engineering company. The proponent not. did not issue, issue a retraction or a letter of apology. And uh, the letter of apology was pale in comparison to the accusation letter. So. Other than dealing, knowing that we were dealing with a, a company that had uh, very little integrity uh, that we had witnessed to this point, one of the most frustrating things in this whole process is, is, is dealing with the lopsided aggregate resources process. Everything, a lot, every step of the way has been designed to ensure uh, that the permit application process approved. is is approved, and it just it forces local communities in these types of fights just to take it on the chin for, for industry and, and that really isn't fair. Um, one of the next steps was uh, pr the proponent was urging our council at the time to rezone uh, this uh, area that was the proposed quarry site. Originally it was zoned a restricted uh, open space, uh, things like uh, recreate, outdoor recreational activities. Uh, designed in such a way to protect the uh, pristine habitat uh, would be rezoned. Uh, they are urging them to uh, amend the zoning uh, to mineral extraction. And of course it is uh, within uh, township boundaries but it is crown land which technically falls under the, the province's mandate How and it is also Robinson here on treaty land. So a little bit of a complicated process. So anyway, uh, we had many meetings trying to urge council to educate themselves about the damage of this uh, potential project. Uh, we shared information about the research. Um, we urged them to go over the documents. We did, gave them Reader's Digest version of the documents to try and, and, and let them know just the magnitude of this project. 128 years at the end of the day, who's going to make sure that uh, that this land is rehabilitated and sadly uh, very few pits and quarries are actually uh, brought to full rehabilitation it is just uh, it's a sad state of affairs 
anyway, so we had meetings, public hearings, uh, and of course, um, they also were heavily uh, weighed toward the proponent. Um, we were allowed into these meetings, but we were shushed. Uh, we asked questions. We submitted questions to council that many of us feel were one never, were we're never really answered. And in, a, and in a public forum type of meeting, we were each given one question and a, and a time limit in which to ask it. And we really felt that before we went in that the decision was already made. We sat in this audience. The proponent was on one side of the room council was on the other. We had a planner that, as far as we understand, has been hired by uh, the proponent, and uh, there seemed to be an air of congeniality between everybody, as if they had, uh, in their locked meeting before we were allowed into the building, that they had all, everything was decided, and they just had to go through the motions. Uh, not long after that, there was a committee of an ad adjustment meeting, which of course was the council at the time, and they voted uh, three to two in favor of rezoning. It's interesting to note that since that uh, vote has been ratified, two of the three, uh, mayor and, and one councillor uh, who voted in favor of uh, rezoning to mineral extraction have since jumped ship. So um, it very, uh, it just the whole process reeked of, of conflict of interest. Since then, um, we have had a by-election to, and we have a new mayor who uh, is um, hoping to uh, instill some transparency and a new sense of community uh, to the township of the North Shore because this is this issue has really divided the community. Um, when you're looking at a, a land use turtle habitat such as what we has been discovered here. You're looking at one of the largest uh, pristine, untouched uh, environmental uh, uh, area where it's, it's obvious that the Blanding Turtle is not only surviving, but thriving. My role, uh, I believe, uh, my, the most important role was to help them get the answers so that the right decisions could be put into place. Uh, the right information was being shared and that all of the cards were being put on the table as far as what were going to be the objectives, what is going to be the length of this. Is it possible? Is it the right thing to do? Um, you know, the, the scary part is, is, is as, a, as a, uh, an MPP, I've recognized a lot of what this government has put into place. And slowly but surely, they are deteriorating the consultation process and the public uh, uh, opportunities for them to voicing their opinions. And right now, what you have is legislation, and, and I hate to use the term in there, but it's to pay the slate. The proponent doesn't even bat an eye when you talk about this, but to me, this is really important because when this becomes a giant hole, these creeks and this part of Long Lake will just, the water will go into there. And then it'll become a question of, pumping it out with a series of pumps and putting that water into a settling pond apparently and then the 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 liquid will just go back into the into the wetland which will then drain out into the big lake two ways either through Trudel Creek and through Lozon and into um, into the big lake here or into Long Lake, Sprague Creek, and into Serpent Harbor here. And those all feed into that's Lake all, Huron. That's all Lake Huron. The quarries, I really don't, uh, they don't do enough studies on them. Not enough. They think just taking a rock, go and pile it up someplace is good. It doesn't. Because when you disturb the environment, how are you going to put it back in place? You don't have a plan. Everybody said, you know, just go pile a rock and you pay your dues to the uh, to the crown, and you you you've done it. That's not the that's not the case. First Nations, the one that's going to be living here after you guys are gone, and we got to try and exist and what's remaining. Do you think that there's a chance? Do you think that First Nations can stop that quarry? I happening? think so. Sure. How? How? Just saying no. 
say no. This is our territory and you're not having any kind of development until we're, we're satisfied. Not the government's satisfied, we're satisfied. All right, we're lucky we've got a beautiful sunny day. Um, we're headed up to check out some Blanding's turtle critical habitat. Uh, on the potential quarry site. We have some traditional ecological knowledge. Keeper elders from Serpent River First Nation with us. We've got our biologists, and it's going to be a great day. I'm Carolyn Reckley. I live in the Wanapake First Nation, uh, just north of Sudbury. Okay. Ken Mawoski, I'm from the uh, Serpent River Nation. I'm here to re represent part of the uh, um, Turtle Island Centre for Research and Education, and uh, we're part of the Robinson here on Treaty, both Carolyn and I. Turtle Island Centre, we've uh, located the uh, Research Nation here because we're right in the heart of um, the Blanding Turtle, Turtle Country, and there's two other species that are on the endangered list that are here. It's also being proposed that we put in that um, an open pit mine be located in this exact spot. That that changes the course of history for this this whole area. It's just kind of the uh, peak of the iceberg. There are a number of issues that are that are going on here. Um, <clears throat> the Serpent River watershed being one of them. This is huge. We're in an area that. Uh, has a history of um, uranium uh, in, in the area. If we were to disturb that uranium in any shape or form, it becomes active and consequently dust uh, ends up in clean water, whether it's a lake, a river, a stream going into the, ultimately end up in uh, Lake Huron. But now that they are, that they, have passed that uh, that zoning bylaw um, we're looking at or I'm looking at uh, and uh, I have to discuss it of course with council as a new the new mayor the possibility of taking a look at that and trying in some way to rescind it or at the very least at this stage of the game to try and get some additional time which will allow us to do a more complete study of the area because I don't think from what I've seen I don't think that the hydrological study was sufficient I don't think that they, um, uh, they've con they certainly haven't convinced me that uh, creating this quarry won't affect the water system in the area. The quarry and the economics that they're suggesting will come to this community uh, opposed, as opposed to the uh, tourist uh, and, um, and the environment of this area and, and the wealth that it can bring into this community. All right, we just uh, got word that the biologists have uh, found a Blanding's turtle, so we're headed over there to check it out. Oh, my the, name the, is Free Love. The, oh the, the brother love is in there. <laughs> They're notorious wanderers. Yeah, like how far will this would this lady travel? Uh, two kilometers in the summer. Yeah. Oh, well, more than that. Yeah, five, yeah, they yeah, wanted to do four kilometers, here? right? Oh, yeah. She's got to go up that hill there. Yeah, yeah she climbed, and that uh, nesting site is right next to the road. <laughs> oh, and Sorry. that's the elevated site, eh? They're one of the most sociable animals I have ever studied. Then they, I swear, they've each got personalities, although as a scientist, I'm not really supposed to say that. <laughs> it's a treaty issue. 21 First Nation have to approve it. If it's all right, if it's safe. So when we do something like this, we're not talking about just today, today's presence. We're talking generations that's going to be coming down the road. My grandchildren, my great grandchildren, and the ones that are not born yet. Get me out of here. <laughs> yeah.